All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is Vicki Verley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the new moon, which is happening right on January 1st uh, at 10 degrees of Capricorn over here. Now, you know, I always tell people, and this is true, normally, the, you know, everybody gets all worked up over the new year. Oh, it's the new year, and we're going to make resolutions, we're going to do all this stuff. And really, um, the new year doesn't have a whole lot of bearing in, in most cases. Uh, it, but in this this year it actually does, because the new moon is falling right on January 1st on the new year. Uh, but in a more general sense, first of all, your your personal new year every year is your birth date or thereabouts, your solar return. And your solar return occurs every year right around your birthday, usually give or take a day or so. And you can run charts for that. I do, I do uh, solar return charts. And that is your personal new year. That, that is the most powerful day. That's when you're in your power. That's the day that you want to make any changes in your life. Um, Secondly, uh, the other new year is really uh, the winter solstice, you know, more so than January 1st. And no, under normal circumstances, January 1st has very little bearing on anything, <laughs> really. Um, but again, you could look at it from it may have a bearing because it's in the collective consciousness, unconscious, you know, it's out there. So uh, we, we put a, we put a uh, power in it, we give it power as a collective. Um, but as I said, this year in particular, and there actually is a new moon occurring right on January 1st, and it is a doozy. It is a very, very powerful new moon that is occurring. Um, and speaking, before I get off the topic, you know, speaking of uh, the new moon, I do run your yearly forecast charts for, they're only $22, and um, it's not always, they're not always the same length because it just covers the transits for the year, but it's very long. I just did mine. I, I run my own every year, and I refer to it all year long, and mine was 62 pages, so it's it's quite a lot of information that you get for a little price, and if you want to order one, you can check out um, on the Tapestry of Life Mandalas on the order page. I have all the chart options, but that's also available, and that also makes a great gift for somebody because it's uh, you know it's all about you for the whole year. But anyways, let's look at this thing. Wow, uh, you know, sun conjunct moon at ten degrees. So sun conjunct moon always that's the you know that's what a new moon is. That's what's happening. Almost eleven, ten fifty seven. So it's just about at that eleven degree mark. Conjunct Pluto, conjunct Mercury. But that's not even, you know, all of it. This, there's Uranus square Pluto is involved with the Mars opposition over here. So this is some heavy-duty, volatile um, energy here. You know, when I look at it, how I do when I look at it, like, kind of just psychically, I see that the, the Jupiter is what really stands out to me and how the Jupiter is, like, splaying all this uh, light and everything at it. Um, to me, it's almost as if Jupiter is... Uh, trying to <laughs> it's like putting up a force field here or blasting it out with love or good intentions or you know something along those lines um I, the like jupiter is could be the saving grace here but we we actually have a grand cross in cardinal here involving jupiter sun pluto mercury moon <laughs> mars and uranus so there's a big cross going on here so that that's powerful and that's that's definitely happening this is change. This is change. This is a new beginning. If you wanted to make a big change in your life, let's look at it from that perspective. You know, as on a positive note, New Year's resolution, you want to do something drastic to change your life. This would be some powerful energy. <laughs> this would be some powerful energy. I'm laughing because I'm trying to find the, 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 the bright side of, the, of this because it's, it could get pretty dark to be, to be real, real honest. You know, just this is some... Uranus and Mars, war, upheaval, you know, violence, crazy, unpredictable, Uranus, somebody, could, it could be violence, I'm going to be real frank, Pluto and all this, this could be violence, this could be, I would not, I would keep this in mind, and I would not, um, if I was out, especially if people are drunk, alcohol involved, you know, something crazy could happen. You know, you could say something to somebody and they could just go off and attack you or, you know, shoot you. I mean, I'm, hopefully that's not the case. And I think we should all, you know, let's not go there. Let's try to, you know, take the other side of it. Let's try to shoot beams of love at it, you know, like uh, the Jupiter. Let's try to calm that with the water energy. Let's try to calm it all down. Uh, but people could be volatile. It could just flip in a dime. Accidents, I, you know, people are traveling. I would... It, it, you know, driving, because um, Mercury is involved here, and Uranus. 
uh, car accidents. It, you know, there could be uh, those kind of traveling accidents, plane rides and stuff. I mean, I'm not trying to scare people. I don't like the, when everybody gets all up in arms and fear-based and let's get all afraid because that's not, that's just going to, you know, add fuel to the fire. Let's try to go the other way. But these are the kind of things, you know, that could happen, you know. Uh, so, people, and then again, people are out partying and going crazy on New Year's, you know. It, that, that just is, um, you know, that's not a great, um, It's it could be volatile, that's all I want to say. But let's not, again, let's not try to go there. Let's try to keep it in the calm, keep it, let's embrace the Jupiter energy. If somebody says some flippant thing to you or, you know, tries to, like, pick a fight with you or go off, let's just, um, you know, let's just turn the other cheek, walk away, be calm, blast them with love. You can watch my blasting with love uh, light energy uh, video because that's, uh, you're not going to do anything to change anybody else's mind. And, you know, with Pluto, it is deep change within within yourself. You know, that's, that's where the, the nature of Pluto is. It's going within. It's not outward expression. Although Mars is very much outward expression, and Uranus and Aries is very much outward expression. Um, and with this, you know, Uranus and Aries, like this is like there's no talking to somebody. Somebody's off on a rant, or they're off uh, on an anger. You know, there's a lot of this is like anger vibes too, and this could be pent up anger. You know, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. You know, that, that kind of vibe, and. Uh, you don't want to get caught in the crossfire. And it's people are... I've learned this my entire life from my parents having the bar. You can't reason with a drunk. You can't reason or talk to a drunk. There's no... It's fruit, totally useless, fruitless endeavor. There's no There's no reason to even give that a shot. Uh, it's better to just walk away. It's better to just, you know... And maybe you're drinking too, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm not going out there. <laughs> I'm staying out of this mess. I'll tell you that. Uh, but I know that most people will be out, and you know that that's the nature of of the New Year's Day and and New Year's Eve. It's you know it's the party time. It's time to party. More so than Mars, this Uranus squaring all this stuff. It's like, um, just as I feel like Jupiter is trying to do this love, you know, beam the love onto this. I feel like Uranus is just trying to irritate it and just wants to get in there and like poking a stick in a bee's nest, you know? And uh, like, I'm trying to start a fight with you because I'm pissed off and I want to start a fight with you. That's what I'm I'm feeling uh, like this. And me, Aries, and Uranus, my my ambitions are gone anyway with Uranus. You know, I'm letting it all hang out, baby. And then, the, you know, the alcohol, which you could, you know, put that with the cancer water energy, but that's going to, that's going to make it um, even worse. Um, also at this degree, Mark, give or take this 10 degree. This has been something, again, if you watch some of the past readings, this has been something that's been going on for a while, these 10 degree marks. So if you have these 10 degrees, you know, you're really going to be feeling it. Uh, but then Chiron's in here, too, as a sextile. Sextiling the, the new moon point with the Pluto and Mercury over here. So, again, I feel like these are old wounds. You know, and maybe Chiron can be a healing and all this stuff, but not with all this other stuff coming up. You know, somebody's going to, you know, you could say something, oh, my mother used to say that to me with the cancer stuff. You know, it could have absolutely nothing to do with anything that you've done or said, but it's this old wound, you know, or, you know, my dad used to say that to me and blah, 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 and they're just going to freak out and go off at you. That's the vibration I'm getting. I, I don't like to be negative, Nelly, but this is really some volatile stuff going on here. We do have some nice trines, though. You know, with the Chiron is trining. It's in a wide orb, but it's kind of trining that thing. But there's another water oh, over here. We've got Saturn trine Jupiter. So actually, you know, that's kind of a wide orb. It's 20 and 16 here. And Lilith, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I'm against, you know, stamping on Lilith that it's just the angry woman, but it totally could be. And the drunk angry woman. And there's nothing worse than that. You know, speaking of drunks, I, this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time and all my years of observing uh, drunk people. What I find uh, with the drunks or people uh, that are uh, intoxicated from whatever alcohol or whatever their uh, drug of choice may be, it seems when you're drunk, your moon comes out. Like, I have moon and Sag, so I was always a happy drunk, you know. But people that have, like, Scorpio or Aries moons, they can be really mean. 
they can just turn they could be perfectly nice people and then they get a couple of drinks in them and they just turn mean so if you the people in your immediate circle are the people you're going to be hanging out with um you know look at their moons their uh, individual moon sign because that's going to tell you a lot of how they're going to act uh when their inhibitions are down or when they're un under the influence but back to these uh trines what i was going to mention here so we've got 16 you know the 20 degree range here trying to uh, excuse me saturn in the 20 degree range nothing really down here in 20 pisces but if you do have anything at 20 pisces or in the neighborhood of 20 pisces in your natal chart this could be a saving grace for you this may be uh you know because the, the, the trines do bring about the harmony this could be something that could uh, help you out or for that matter anything around the 20 Scorpio or 20 Cancer, but particularly if it's filling in that, that trine. And there was also, there's a Earth trines going on too. This whole point, these tens and everything, up here trining Pallas, Athena, and then the, 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 the missing point and that would be somewhere around 10 degrees of Taurus. So if you have anything near like 10 degrees of Taurus, this also could be maybe a little bit lighter hearted for you, not so... Um, not so uh harsh you know that that's the way out the way out is to deal with it in a trine way in a harmonious way um you know back to here moon like i said when you're drunk your inner emotions come out well moon moon's involved moon and capricorn uh sometimes you know and i have a capricorn son i'm a capricorn natal you know my i'm born december 26 i am a capricorn son so i'm not trying to get down on capricorns <laughs> But Capricorns uh, can be cold. You know, that's one of the things that... Uh, so, you know, the Capricorn moon is kind of a cold placement. Like, I don't care about your feelings. I don't care about feelings at all. You know, I'm just going to be a cold, nasty person, you know. And then, you know, Pluto Mercury, you could say stuff. You could say stuff that you regret. And especially, again, I keep harping on the alcohol, but it's, you know, it's the biggest drinking, you know, besides the day before Thanksgiving, New Year's is second and St. Patrick's Day, depending on where you're at. These are the times when people are drinking. People who don't, and here's another thing, you know, I, this is terrible to say, but this is the, what we used to say in the bar business. It's amateur night. You know, it's the people who don't normally drink, who can't hold their alcohol, are getting drunk, and they're out of control they don't they can't handle themselves you know and so that's that's happening too and so mercury you could be spewing out some stuff that's saying things that you would never say <laughs> under normal circumstances you know you would never say this but you know, and because it's a new moon you know this could be this isn't just for that day you know you could say something and it's going to have longer lasting implications it could cause a problem for you know the whole month it might take you a whole month to uh, patch things up or, you know, so, you know, you got to watch what you say. And it's harder to hold your tongue uh, when you've been drinking. Uh, the other, um, in Neptune, speaking of drinking and everything, the Neptune and the Pisces, that's, that rules that. Neptune is uh, trying the, the North Node. So there are some ways out here. There are some, some trines here. Uh, through Pallas, this whole conglomeration is uh, trining Pallas. I know it's just an asteroid, but again... It's like taking the high road. So somebody does come up to you and says some nasty remark to your face. Again, I would just take the high road. I wouldn't to let it take me personally. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't engage with them. Basically, I would not engage with them because it's not. There's it's a no-win situation. There's no, uh, you know, there's no winning in this uh, in this kind of energy. Uh, honestly, I think <laughs> it's best to just lay low. Um, you know, Saturn involved here with this uh, Saturn trying Jupiter, you know. So this is the way out, too. Uh, Saturn and Scorpio. And these are longer-term things here, too. So maybe before you, you know, blurt something out in the heat of the moment, stop and think about long-term. Stop and think about how it's going to affect the other person, you know. This air, Uranus air is getting, and this Mars, you know, you could just be like, I don't care. Like, like I said earlier, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. And Chiron, it could be stuff in Pluto has been welling up for years and years, and you're just gonna, you know, and you, you can't stop it. It's like one, it's like once it starts, you're not going to be able to stop yourself. That's that's what I feel. Once you open your mouth, it's all coming. It's all coming out there. So. This is, you know, handle with care. <laughs> I guess that would be the thing, handle with care. 
on a positive note, with this Saturn, uh, if you want to make changes, you know, forget about just the drinking and the night of, you know, the party night and everything. Pluto, you could make some really long term, maybe this year, some of these um, New Year's resolutions could actually stick. You know, that's the high road. That's the positive way. Uh, and it's with Saturn and Jupiter, we could make you could make long term changes in your life. So say, you know, and you wanted to, um, you know, whatever, quit smoking. That's a common one or like whatever, some kind of food diet thing with the, you know, the cancer people, everybody, I'm going to lose 10 pounds or whatever. You know, maybe you you maybe could really do it this year. Maybe this energy could this energy is transformation and change in itself. You know, if we take out the Uranus, all this squares and all this other crazy stuff, if you just look at the new moon with the Pluto and the Mercury, it could be long term changes, you know, if we if we eliminate some of these other things and not, not really look at them. But you know, you have to look at them. I mean that's part of looking at the chart. But um and Mercury you could say what you mean. Like you're going to, you know, everybody, it's all, oh, I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to, I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Well, with this, what you say could really um, happen. Here's what I want to say. Here, here's what, here's it. And here's the whole reading in a nutshell. What you say could have long lasting implications. Okay. So if you say you're going to make a change in yourself for the better, you're going to take the high road. You very well could do it, and I hope that's what it happens for everyone. That's my wish for everyone. But if you say something mean or nasty to somebody, you can't take it back. And you know, another thing with this, please don't drink and drive. I know it's such a cliche, but this is accident waiting to happen. Mercury and stuff, and long-lasting implications. I mean, you could, somebody, you know, you could hurt somebody. You know, somebody could get hurt, seriously injured. Call a cab, and a lot of the companies have the free cab rides on New Year's and everything. So take advantage of that. Take the train, you know. Don't, um, because you could, you know, in a moment, Mercury, in a moment, Uranus, in a moment, blink of an eye, could change your life forever. I mean, you could kill somebody, or yourself, or hurt permanently, injure, hurt, you know, cripple yourself. Um, so these are things... This is no light energy, you know. I've never been the gloom and doom astrologer, and I'm not that girl usually. But this is—you can't just ignore this. This. This is some pretty powerful stuff here. Again, let's use it for positive. How could we use it for positive? Make changes within yourself. Long-term changes that you've been wanting to do. Um, with Jupiter, um, you know, sometimes call somebody up. Call somebody up that you've had a long-standing feud with. You know, that, that that kind of thing could happen. It could be dissolved, you know. And there maybe there could be a healing. I mean, that's <laughs> that's not the obvious, you know, reaction to this chart. But it's a possibility. And I'll send light out. And, you know, use this Jupiter energy. Let's send these beams of love light out to this. Let's, let's try to subdue it. Let's not feed the fuel of the fire and be the gloom and doom. Oh, it's all, it's all bad. It's all going to be bad. Let's try to turn it into the positive. We have the power. The collective prayer and meditation and everything. There is so much power and that is so very powerful. Like Pluto is very powerful. And the moon, that is the subconscious mind. So let's try to use that. Let's try to use that energy. And by the way, you know, Jupiter in Cancer, the ruler is the moon. The moon rules Cancer. So the moon, besides it being the new moon, that the, there is power in this uh, this nurturing Cancerian uh, you know, love energy over here. Okay, so that is it. And remember, if you want to get your chart done for only twenty-two dollars, I've got that great chart. I I I forgot how cool it was. I ran mine. I'm looking at it. It's packed full of information. Covers every aspect for the entire year. Roughly sixty pages long. Uh, if you'd like to book a private reading with me, you can also do that on the tapestry page. And there's some other cool. Uh, computer chart reports you can order there, the Edgar Casey Past Life Report and the GEM Report. and So you can just take a look at that on your own. Um, I wish you the very best uh, Happy New Year. Um, remember you are love and beauty incarnate. Uh, check out my site's Tapestry of Light and Oregon Energy. Thank you for commenting and thank you for liking and sharing my videos. And I'll see you in the new year. What is Organite? Originally discovered in the 1930s by Wilhelm Reich, Organ energy, or etheric energy, is present in living things including the human body. 
Wright proposed that illness occurs when our etheric body is out of balance and that positive organ energy could realign the etheric field, thus facilitating healing and balance of one's life force, chi or prana. It has since been scientifically proven that energy called piezoelectricity, meaning electricity resulting from pressure, is created by the compression of certain materials such as quartz crystals, wood, salt, sugar, ceramics, and bones. As the resin cures in an organic piece, it shrinks and compresses the organic matter contained within. The energy emitted creates a positive energy generator. You really can feel the energy coming forth from these pieces. Organite clears the air and neutralizes negative emotions as well as electronic clutter from our high-tech devices. Each organite piece is lovingly hand-created using intuitive pairing of materials to enhance and raise vibration and aid in ascension and a spiritual awakening. I use materials from nature, including the bark from a sacred willow for grounding and gold flakes to emulate the golden light basking down from the higher dimensions. Visit my Etsy shop for a wide selection of handmade organ pieces, especially designed for spiritual growth, including heart opening, chakra alignment and activation, and more. Visit www.organenergyflow.etsy.com to see more beautiful organ pieces. And remember, you are love and beauty incarnate.